Hi, thanks for tuning in and we are back on In Realty. Um, last month, earlier in April, uh, the government has announced and also launched uh, the My First Home Scheme, uh, which is uh, useful for the younger generations who are faced with high cost of living as well as the exorbitant real estate uh, prices. So with me today again, please welcome uh, James Ong of Fortis FP. So James is going to tell us on how one can um, work on their budget with this whole uh, My First Home Scheme. Thank you, James, for being with us today. So, okay, um, the government has launched uh, the My First Home Scheme um, early last month. So, care to enlighten us on the details sure. of what My First Home Scheme is all about? Yes. Uh, thanks, Lina. Okay. Nice to see you again. Uh, the My First Home Scheme is actually part of the government's uh, initiative under the budget uh, 2011, mm -hmm. which is to promote ownership for some of the people who are working. Uh, so that they can afford to actually own a property. Mm -hmm. The property is a uh, range that is now the government is actually promoting is for people to Malaysians to buy property of the range of 100,000 ringgit, 220,000 ringgit. Okay. Which is open to people who are less than 35 years old, up to 35 years old, mm -hmm. earning up to a gross income of 3,000 per month. Okay. So they must be in the private sector they must be employed for at least six months. All right. And out of this uh, income that they take home, one third will be actually used for the payment of installment mm -hmm. for them to acquire this property. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if they earn 3,000 ringgit, 1,000 ringgit will be used to actually buy this property. Mm -hmm. So this is a government initiative. And the, bank, the government uh, have actually worked with uh, 25 banks, mm -hmm. uh, conventional, bank, conventional banks, and also the Islamic banks to mm -hmm. actually uh, facilitate this application of property. And this property is purely for residential use. Okay. And you must actually stay in a property. Right. You cannot buy this property and rent out. No, you must stay in this property. Okay. And this property is, uh, you can buy new or you can buy it uh, from someone else. But it must be your first property. It means in other words, you have bought a property, mm -hmm. you want to use this scheme, you will not be, uh, you won't be able to make use of this scheme. All right. So, yeah. um, for a person who earns uh, three thousand a month, um, that is, I could say, um, it's just nice for a single person to just live by every day with uh, such uh, pay. So, can one really afford to have a property? Okay. The government intention is to allow people who are young. So that's the reason the capping is uh, mm. up to 35 years old. Okay. So up to 35 years old, most people have the capacity mm. in the future to earn it. So in other words, if, if a person were to earn 3,000 ringgit, one third of the income is 1,000 ringgit, and the maximum repayment period is actually 30 years. Mm. So 30 years for 1,000 per month at the present condition, you can actually buy a property up to 200,000 ringgit. Mm. So for 200,000 ringgit, there, is, there are still properties available. But it may not be in the centre of uh, mm. business activities. Mm. But if you look out outside the uh, Klang Valley, which is let's say like Ipoh, small town like Angka, uh, Johor Bahru, Sebram Prai, mm. Kuantan, I'm very sure there's still more properties around that range. But I've said this is a government initiative to cater mm. for young people who are working, who are starting out to own properties. Mm. So this segment will help out a little bit. So you know, the affordability is still within reach. They can still be able to afford this property. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, ha having said that, um, sure. how crucial is um, you know owning a property to a person who is of that age, 30, 35, to you, your honest opinion? How important it is for a person of that age to own okay. a property? Uh, there are some people uh, who are single. Uh -huh. There are some people who are family. Uh, it's just like a person, whether a person needs a bike or needs a car. Mm. Of course, if you want comfort, you buy a car. If it's not boyfriend, girlfriend, you take money. Same goes for a property. Mm. If you find that you're living up alone, sometimes you may not need to buy a property mm. because property has a commitment. You have to pay this, pay that, and you don't utilize the maximum space unless you're buying because your mother, father, mm. or parents, or sisters stay with you. But if you are family, sometimes you may need to have a place of your own. Mm. It means you have, let's say, one daughter. You find that you may have a small place, but at least a small place is still your place. Mm. So some of them, after they come in, you really why not I buy? So you must see the needs. Mm. So if it's single people, tendencies they may not buy. But family says, "Kalau I buy, say well, If mm. I pay mm. rent, I say I buy a place. Yeah. So if I pay rental eight hundred, I pay them one thousand. Why not I own a place? Mm. Then the day the place is mine. Then after maybe a few years, the uh, 
things always get better. We always look at things getting positive. Once yeah. they can afford it, they can upgrade. So it's a midterm uh, decision for mm. people to compare. Okay, right. and that's another dilemma to buy or to rent. Yes. Because that's what we're going to discuss uh, next week again with James Ong uh, to yeah. buy or to rent. Uh, we'll see you again next week on In Realty.